Tucked in the captivating Himalayas, Nepal is one of the most climate change vulnerable countries in the world. In fact, Climate Change Risk Atlas 2011 ranks Nepal as the fourth most vulnerable country. The Strategic Programme for Climate Resilience in Nepal identifies water availability as one of the three most critical climate risks. The anticipation of climate change impacts in water resources in mountainous landscape of Nepal includes greater water scarcity in the high mountain regions during the dry season due to too little water, affecting water quality and availability in the middle mountains, and during the monsoon with too much water, causing more water-related disasters such as landslide in the mountains and flooding, sedimentation, waterborne disease in the flatlands of Churia Tarai region. Given the already observed everyday escalating water scarcity situation in the mountains of Nepal, it has become necessary to sustainably manage the water sources and the watersheds. In doing so, it is also necessary to learn from the best practices by various initiatives in the past and the ones which are ongoing. In our attempt to learn from the best practices that have tried to address knowingly and unknowingly watershed management and climate resilience issues in the mountainous landscapes of Nepal, we did case studies of community-based watershed management best practices For the first best practices learning, we went to see Rupa Lake Rehabilitation and Fisheries Cooperative Project in Rupa Kot Village Development Committee of Kaski District in Western Nepal. There, we tried to learn how payment of environmental service in a community-based watershed management works. <laughs> Rupa Tal, spread in an area of about 100 hectares, is a freshwater lake. Ten years ago, it was almost on the verge of disappearing due to soil erosion, sedimentation and encroachment by water hyacinths. After the Rupa project was started with the technical support of local NGO, Local Initiative for Biodiversity Research and Development in 1992, the face of Rupa has changed, not only with regard to conservation and sustainable management of the Rupa watershed, but in terms of people's livelihood also. Yeah, हाम्रो यो ताल सभा भयो एउटा अब यसलाई पुरिन बाट कमसेकम हामीले 10 15 वर्ष पछाडी गयो अब यो हाइजेनिक खालको माछा उत्पादन गरेर त्यो खालको उत्पादन छ अनि यो माछा तपाईको के छ भने हामीले बजार सम्म बेचेका छम नि बजारमा बेचेपछि यहाँको मान्छेको आम्दानी बजारको मान्छेको पैसा हामीले यहाँ ले र हामीले यो ओरिपरिका मान्छे जति छन् नि यो ओरिपरि क्यासमन एरिया बस्ने मान्छेलाई ताल चाहिँ हाम्रो रहिछ यसलाई संरक्षण गर्न पनि दायित्व पनि हाम्रो रहिछ उत्पादन और एक दिश्टी कोण बाढ़ उत्पादन लेनी ये समझ से अब जब पर्यटन को करा हूँ जब पर्यटन विकास करने से किंसा जैविता समर्थन करने से किंसा ये विविध करा हूँ जब हमले करने पड़ने The Rupa Lake Rehabilitation and Fishery Cooperative has currently a membership share of 700 people from the upstream and downstream village settlements. <laughs> Common, 
every day in an average 40 to 50 kilograms of fish is caught and sold by the cooperative. In a year, about 50,000 US dollars is earned. From the profit made from the income, 20% is invested in the conservation of the lake in activities like bioengineering for the maintenance of the 17 community forests upstream and surrounding Rupa Lake and in environmental education of the children in the local schools. The Rupa Lake project, after 10 years, has set an example how, with community's participation and ownership, the watershed can be climate resilient and there can be a balance of ecology and livelihood. After Rupa Lake, we headed towards Siangja and Kabre districts to learn about the best practices in multiple water use system or MUS in water source and watershed management. In the highlands of Siangja district, in Arupata village of Jagat Bhanjang Village Development Committee, the smallholder farmers needed a reliable water supply and management system to diversify farm production and grow cash crops. The villagers organized themselves and approached several organizations for assistance. Eventually, with the help of multiple partnerships and technical and financial support of International Development Enterprise and other governmental line agencies, the Arupata Solar Multiple Water Use System was built at a cost of about 38,000 US dollars in 2007. Som Prasad Gurung, 39-year-old secretary of Arupata Solar Mus Committee, told us the multiple water use system is providing water for drinking and irrigation to 56 smallholder farmers in the village. Further, 30-year-old Sita Rana added, women in the village earlier had to carry water from an hour distance. That has changed now and they have more free time to do other productive works. The Arupata village small farmers have been making an income of 75 to 250 US dollars a month after they have been enabled by the MUS to diversify the cash crops. Though the solar MUS in Arupata has been expensive, it was required as the water needed to be lifted about 50 meters from the source to upstream mountain village farmlands and settlements. Further looking for best practices learning, in Mogargaon of Kabre district, 68-year-old Ram Thapa Magar, who has been living and farming in the village for six generations, told us the water springs were drying due to the rise in temperature, less rainfall and loss of forests. Gombar Thapa, field staff of International Development Enterprise in Kabre, told us why and how the Mogargaon Mus was built. चार पांच बरस आगाडी त्यो ठाउँमा म पुग्दाखेरि त्यो सामान्य त्यो पुरानो किसिमले खाने पाइने आइराखेको थियो र त्यसलाई मर्मत गर्ने चाहिँ हामी धेरै ठाउँमा देखियो हेर्दाखेरि र त्यहाँको समुदायसँग बसेर छलफल गर्दा समुदायबाट पनि के कुरा आयो भने यो पानीको मर्मत गर्दिन पाए हामीलाई खाने पानी प्लस केही बर्ता भएको पानी चाहिँ हामी यसो केही सिचाई गरेर the Mogar Gao Mus, though built in the same way through multiple partnerships and multiple contributions compared to Arupata Solar Mus, it was built on a relatively low cost of around 3,000 US dollars. In Mogargao, normal mus built in 2007 is providing water for drinking and irrigation to 45 houses.
Ram Thapa Magar has already this year sold tomatoes worth 250 US dollars. In both Arupata and Magargaon, community-based user group committees own and manage the multiple water use system. They collect a nominal fee of 1 to 2 US dollars per month from the beneficiaries for the maintenance of their moss. The communities in the mountain villages of Rupakot, Siangjha and Kabre in Nepal are happy with what they are doing to be climate resilient in water source conservation and watershed management. And the lessons we can learn from these best practices are watershed management should be planned and implemented with the right balance of ecological and livelihood approach. Payment for environmental service can be made for multiple sectors such as economic, education and conservation. Investment in solar multiple water use system could be expensive, but it can be a trade-off between investment and return. Last but not the least, community ownership, participation and capacity building are a must in the best practices of water source and watershed management.